Hi, my name is Sheila. In this video, we are going to be talking about the sued crypto ambassadors. These would be the FTX ambassadors. And I think there have been as many as seven lawsuits. There has been some movement in some of that. I think one may have been dismissed. Another may, may have been consolidated with this one. This is our number one case. I think this is the one that may have started it all. This is Edwin Garrison and a whole bunch of other similarly situated people because he is seeking class action status on this. This is coming out of Florida. Class action complaint, jury demand, Edwin Garrison versus Samuel Bankman Freed. And let's see if I can get my movement here so that we can actually scroll down on this thing. All right. Class action complaint and demand for jury trial. And this is a very interesting way to start a complaint. My first thought was, is this real? I don't even know if this is real. Anyway, this is what I download. <laughs> it looks real. It has a file number at the top. I don't think I've ever seen a complaint start this way with just throwing it all out there but everything about this has been both different and the same the same in that it's just another fraud accusation allegations the same uh different as in yeah look at how it's starting okay <sighs> sorry if you guys are just like sheila just move along with it then there's things that have happened with voyager and with ftx now that's somebody running a company that's dumb, that's just dumb as greedy. So what does Sam Bankman do? He just give me more, give me more, give me more. So I'm going to borrow money, loan it to my affiliated company and hope and pretend to myself that the FTT tokens that are in there on my balance sheet are going to sustain their value. This is the quote. Mark Cuban, November 12th, 2022. Then we have what looks to be a response from Sam Bankman Friedman, from Sam Bankman Freed. Number one, I'm sorry. That's the biggest thing. I up and should have known better. Defendant Sam Bankman Freed, former S some former CEO FTX. I'm having a hard time this morning, you guys. Please stick with me um here and then we have um the footnote at the bottom with the where this is coming from all right let's scroll on to the next page maybe we're going to get to the way a complaint typically starts which is what you see here plaintiff and i don't want to mess up anybody's name some of these names i don't know how to pronounce plaintiff edwin garrison plaintiffs files this com class action complaint on behalf of himself and all others similarly situated against Sam Bankman Freed, Tom Brady, Giselle, I've never known how to say her last name, Steve, Stephen Curry, Golden State Warriors, and I'm used to saying Steph Curry, but Golden State Warriors, Shaquille O'Neal, Udonis Heslam, David Ortiz, William Trevor Lawrence, Otani, Naomi Osaka, Lawrence Jean David, and Kevin O'Leary, collectively defendants, all parties who either controlled, promoted, assisted in, and actively participated in FTX trading, LTD, doing business as FTXs, now referred to as FTX trading, and West Realm Shares Services, Inc., doing business as FTX US, which is what they're going to call it, collectively all referred to as the FTX entities, offer and sale of unregistered securities in the form of yield bearing accounts, YBAs, to residents of the United States seeking to recover damages, de declaratory and or injunctive relief stemming from the offer and sale of FTX tradings and FTX US's yield bearing cryptocurrency accounts. Okay, so basically they're saying you guys were trying to sell unregistered securities. Okay. All right. Now that you have suffered um, through my reading of that, I think I just need to get warmed up this morning. Introduction. 
Number one, the deceptive and failed FTX platform was based upon false representations and deceptive conduct. Although many incriminating FTX emails and texts have already been destroyed, we located them and they evidence how FTX's fraudulent scheme was designed to take advantage of unsophisticated investors from across the country who utilize mobile apps to make their investments. As a result, American consumers collectively sustained over $11 billion in damages. FTX organized and emanated its fraudulent plan from its worldwide headquarters located here in Miami, Florida. Florida became the quote, hot spot, unquote, for crypto companies, hosting the most investments in crypto startups, as well as the annual Bitcom Miami 2022 Global Forum. Several crypto companies, including crypto exchange, Blockchain.com, Ripple, and FTX.us moved their headquarters to Miami. Others, including fellow exchange eToro, expanded their U.S. presence with offices in Miami. FTX was already very familiar with Miami, signing a deal worth more than $135 million for the naming rights of the waterfront area, where three time NBA champions, the Miami Heat play. Factual background. On December 24th, 2021, counsel for plaintiff and the proposed class members brought the first and only putative nationwide class action complaint against the now defunct cryptocurrency trading app Voyager. And there you have the case information alleging that the platform owned and operated by Voyager Digital LTD and Voyager Digital LLC was an unregulated and unsustainable fraud. In the Cassidy action, plaintiffs also alleged that defendant L. Um, Ehrlich, Voyager's CEO, teamed up with defendants Cuban and the Dallas Mavericks to promote Voyager by making false representations and employing other means of deception. As a result, the Voyager plaintiff and Voyager class members all sustained losses in excess of $5 billion. The allegations in the Cassidy complaint and specifically Mark Cuban's role in promoting Voyager received national attention. Um, see, and they have a website here summarizing the allegations and explaining that Mark Cuban, owner of the NBA's Dallas Mavericks, is a major stakeholder in Voyager. The complaint alleges that he made comments at a press conference in which he specifically targeted unsophisticated investors with false and misleading promises of reaping large profits in the cryptocurrency market. And there you have the link so that you can read it for yourself. After the Cassidy complaint was filed, the following important actions took place. A, the United States Security and Exchange Commission, SEC, began an enforcement review focused on whether Voyager's EARN program accounts, EPAs, constitute unregistered securities. B, seven state attorneys general New Jersey, Alabama, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Texas, Vermont, and Washington took specific action, finding that Voyager was violating their state laws, including issuing cease and desist letters to Voyager, finding that the EPA was an unregistered security, prohibiting the crypto asset broker dealer from selling any more unregistered securities, finding that Voyager used those EPAs to raise millions of dollars in revenue worldwide as of March 1st, 2022. And C, on March 29th, 2002, the state of New Jersey Bureau of Securities entered a cease and desist order against Voyager, finding that the EPA was not exempt from registration under the law and instead that it must be registered. And as a result, Voyager's stock price tanked by 25% in a day and is down over 80% for the year. 
On July 5th, Voyager Digital Holdings Inc. and two affiliated debtors, collectively the debtors, filed voluntary petitions for relief under Chapter 11 of Title 11 of the U.S. Code. Voyager's bankruptcy cases, the Voyager bankruptcy cases, are jointly administered under case number 22-10943 before the Honorable Michael E. Wiles in the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York, the Bankruptcy Court. On September 28, 2022, Voyager filed a motion in the Voyager bankruptcy cases seeking authority to enter into an asset purchase agreement with West Realm Shires, Inc., doing business as FTX US, whereby Voyager will sell substantially all of its assets for a purchase price of approximately $1.422 billion, which includes one, the value of the cryptocurrency on the Voyager platform as of a date to be determined, which as of September 26, 2022, is estimated to be $1.311 billion, plus two, additional consideration, which is estimated to provide at least $111 million in incremental value to the debtor's estates. Everyone involved in the Voyager bankruptcy cases thought that the FTX entities were the, okay, I took French a long time ago. <laughs> I have to look up how to pronounce that and what that means. To come save the day um, by bailing out Voyager and paying back at least some of the losses the Voyager customers sustained. Instead, as explained below, the FTX entities imploded their over $30 billion in value evaporated almost overnight, and the FTX entities found themselves filing their own emergency Chapter 11 bankruptcy petition in Delaware. The deceptive FTX platform maintained by the FTX entities was truly a house of cards, a Ponzi scheme where the FTX entities shuffled customers' fines between their opaque affiliated entities using new investor funds obtained through investments in the YBAs and loans to pay interest to the old ones and to attempt to maintain the appearance of liquidity. Part of the scheme employed by the FTX entities involved utilizing some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment, like these defendants, to raise funds and drive American consumers to invest in the YBAs, which were offered and sold largely from the FTX entities' domestic base of operations here in Miami, Florida, pouring billions of dollars into the deceptive FTX platform to keep the whole scheme afloat. Importantly, although defendants disclosed their partnerships with the FTX entities, they never disclosed the nature, scope, and amount of compensation they personally received in exchange for the promotion of the deceptive FTX platform, which the SEC has explained that a failure to disclose this information would be a violation of the anti-touting provisions of federal securities laws. Moreover, none of these defendants performed any due diligence prior to marketing these FTX products to the public. The FTX took action, okay, please go away. The FTX took action against boxing champ Floyd Mayweather and music producer DJ Khaled, DJ Khaled, after they were paid by cryptocurrency insurers to tweet promotional statements about investing in initial coin offerings, ICOs, ordering them both to pay disgorgement, penalties, and interest for promoting investments in ICOs, including one from cryptocurrency issuer Centratech Inc., for a combined total of $767,500 because they failed to disclose that their promotional efforts on Twitter were paid endorsements. Other celebrities similarly accused and prosecuted for failing to disclose their paid endorsements include Kim Kardashian and basketball player Paul Pierce. 
According to the Federal Trade Commission, cryptocurrency scams have increased more than tenfold year over year, with consumers losing more than 80 million since October 2020, due in large part to the use of such celebrity endorsements. As explained more fully in this complaint, defendants' misrepresentations and omissions made and broadcast around the world, around the world, around the country, through the television and internet, render them liable to plaintiff and class members for soliciting their purchases of the unregistered YBAs. And then we've got a case there holding that promoters of cryptocurrency through online videos could be liable for soliciting the purchase of unregistered securities through mass communication. And no personal solicitation was necessary for the solicitation to be actionable. This action seeks to hold defendants responsible for the many billions of dollars in damages they cause plaintiff and the classes and to force defendants to make them whole. Okay, parties. Plaintiff Edwin Garrison is a citizen and resident of the state of Oklahoma. He is a natural person over the age of 21 and is otherwise sui juris. Plaintiff, sorry, checking my phone. Plaintiff Garrison purchased an unregistered security from FTX in the form of a YBA and funded the account with a sufficient amount of crypto assets to earn interest on his holdings. Plaintiff Garrison did so after being exposed to some or all of defendants' misrepresentations and omissions regarding the deceptive FTX platform as detailed in this complaint and executed trades on the deceptive FTX platform in reliance on those misrepresentations and omissions. As a result, Plaintiff Garrison has sustained damages for which defendants are liable. Defendant Thomas Brady NFL quarterback currently playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is a brand ambassador for FTX and is a citizen and resident of, of Miami-Dade County, Florida. Defendant Giselle is one of the world's highest paid models and a brand ambassador for FTX is a citizen and resident of Miami-Dade County, Florida. Defendant Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, a businessman, television personality appearing regularly on Shark Tank and brand ambassador for FTX is a citizen and resident of Miami Beach, Florida. Defendant Udonis Haslam, an American professional basketball player for the Miami Heat of the NBA and brand ambassador of FTX is a citizen and resident of Miami, Dade County, Florida. Defendant David Ortiz, former designated hitter and first baseman in the MLB and a brand ambassador for FTX is a citizen and resident of the state of Florida. Defendant Sam Bankman Freed, founder and former CEO of FTX and former billionaire is a citizen and resident of the Bahamas. Defendant Steph Curry, professional basketball player for the Golden State Warriors of the NBA and brand ambassador for FTX is a citizen and resident of the state of California. Defendant Golden State Warriors, L LC is a professional basketball team in the NBA that officially launched their partnership with the FTX in 2022 with the unveiling of the FTX logo on the court at the Chase Center and is a corporation operating and existing under the laws of the state of California. Defendant Shaquille O'Neal, former professional NBA basketball star, sports analyst, entrepreneur, and FTX brand ambassador is a citizen and resident of Collin County, Texas. Defendant William Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL and a brand ambassador for FTX, is a citizen and resident of the state of Mississippi. Defendant Shohei Otani, a professional baseball pitcher, designated hitter and outfielder for the Los Angeles Angels of the MLB and a brand ambassador for FTX, is a citizen and resident of the state of California. Defendant Noami Osaka, a professional tennis player and brand ambassador for FTX is a citizen and resident of Beverly Hills, California. Defendant Lawrence Jean David, an American comedian, writer, actor, television producer, and FTX brand ambassador is a citizen and resident of Los Angeles, California. Jurisdiction and venue. This court has subject matter jurisdiction over this action pursuant to 28 U.S.C. section 1332D2A because this is a class action for a sum exceeding $5 million exclusive of interest and costs 
and in which at least one class member is a citizen of a state different than the defendants. This court has personal jurisdiction against defendants because they conduct business in Florida and or have otherwise intentionally availed themselves of the Florida consumer market through promotion, marketing, and sale of FTX's YBAs in Florida, which constitutes committing a tortious act within the state of Florida. Defendants have also marketed and participated and or, oh no, and or assisted in the sale and or assisted in the sale of FTX's unregistered securities to consumers in Florida. This purposeful availment renders the exercise of jurisdiction by this court over defendants permissible under traditional notions of fair play and substantial justice. Venue is proper in this district under 28 U.S.C. Section 1391 because thousands of class members either reside in this district, defendants engaged in business in this district, a substantial part of the offense or omissions giving rise to the claims at issue occurred in this district, and because defendants entered into transactions and or received substantial profits from class members who reside in this district. All conditions precedent to the institution and maintenance of this action have been performed, excused, waived, or have otherwise occurred. Factual allegations, background on FTX. Until seeking the protection of the bankruptcy court, the FTX entities operated a multi-billion dollar mobile application cryptocurrency investment service, the Deceptive FTX platform, that placed cryptocurrency trade orders on behalf of users like plaintiff and class members and offered interest-bearing cryptocurrency accounts. The FTX group of companies, FTX group or FTX, was founded in 2019 and began as an exchange or marketplace for the trading of crypto assets. FTX was established by Samuel Bankman Freed, Gary Wang, and Nishad Singh, with operations commencing in May 2019. FTX was purportedly established in order to build a digital asset trading platform and exchange for the purpose of a better user experience, cus customer protection, and innovative products. FTX built the FTX.com exchange to develop a platform robust enough for professional trading firms and intuitive enough for first-time users. Prior to that, the Silicon Valley-born MIT-educated Bankman Freed, also known as SBF, launched his crypto trading firm Alameda Research in 2017 after stints in the charity world and at trading firm James Street. The FTX.com exchange was extremely successful since its launch. This year, around 15 billion of assets are traded daily on the platform, which now represents approximately 10% of global volume for crypto trading. The FTX team has grown to over 300 globally. Although the FTX entities primary international headquarters is in the Bahamas. Its domestic U.S. base of operations is located in Miami, Florida. FTX quickly became one of the most utilized avenues for nascent investors to purchase cryptocurrency. By the time FTX filed for bankruptcy protection, customers had entrusted billions of dollars to it with estimates ranging from 10 to $50 billion. Bankman Freed got rich off FTX and Alameda with the two companies netting $350 million and $1 billion in profit, respectively, in 2020 alone, according to Bloomberg. At his peak, Bankman Freed was worth $26 billion. At 30, he became a major political donor, gotten celebrities like the co-defendants in this action to vociferously promote FTX and secured the naming rights to the arena where the NBA's Miami Heats play. In early November 2022, crypto publication Coindesk released a bombshell report that called into question just how stable Bankman Fried's empire really was. Bankman Fried's cryptocurrency empire was officially broken into two main parts, FTX, his exchange, and Alameda Research, his trading firm, both giants in their respective industries. But even though they are two separate entities, the division breaks down in a key place, 
on Alameda's balance sheet, which was full of FTX, specifically the FTT token issued by the exchange that grants holders a discount on trading fees on its marketplace. While there is nothing per se untoward or wrong about that, it shows Bankman Fried's trading giant Alameda rests on a foundation largely made up of a coin that his sister company invented, not an independent asset like a fiat currency or another crypto. The situation adds to evidence that the ties between FTX and Alameda are unusually close. After obtaining this information, CZ, the CEO of Binance, decided to liquidate roughly $530 million worth of FTT. Customers also raced to pull out, and FTX saw an estimated $6 billion in withdrawals over the course of 72 hours, which it struggled to fulfill. The value of FTT plunged 32%, but rallied once again with Bankman Fried's surprise announcement on Tuesday, November 8th, that Binance would buy FTX, effectively bailing it out. The next day, Binance announced that it was withdrawing from the deal, citing findings during due diligence, as well as reports of mishandled customer funds and the possibility of a federal investigation. The news sent FTT plunging even further. Bankman Fried saw 94% of his net worth wiped out in a single day. On November 11th, unable to obtain a bailout, FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and Bankman Fried resigned as CEO. Following his resignation, Bankman Fried issued a 22 tweet long explanation of where he believed he and the FTX entities went wrong. I'm sorry, that's the biggest thing. I up and should have known better. I also should have been communicating more very recently. Transparently, my hands were tired during the duration of the possible Binance deal. I wasn't particularly allowed to say much publicly, but of course it's on me that we ended up there in the first place. So here's an update on where things are. This is all about FTX International, the non-US exchange. FTX US users are fine. Treat all of these numbers as rough, there are approximations here. International currently has a total market value of assets collateral higher than client deposits, moves with prices, but that's different from liquidity for delivery, as you can tell from the state of withdrawal. The, li the liquidity varies widely from very to very little. The full story here is one I'm still fleshing out every detail of, but as a very high level, I up twice. The first time, a poor internal labeling of bank-related accounts meant that I was substantially off on my sense of user's margin. I thought it was way lower. My sense before, leverage. U.S. liquidity ready to deliver. Um, leverage was zero times. U.S. liquidity ready to deliver was 24 times average daily withdrawals. Actual Leverage was 1.7 times and liquidity was 0.8 times Sunday's withdrawals. Because of course, when it rains, it pours. We saw roughly 5 billion withdrawals on Sunday, the largest by a huge margin. And so I was off twice, which tells me a lot of things, both specifically and generally that I was at. And a third time and not communicating enough. I should have said more. I'm sorry. I was slammed with things to do and didn't give updates to you all. And so we are where we are, which sucks. And that's on me. I'm sorry. Anyway, right now, my number one priority by far is doing right by users. And I'm going to do everything I can to do that, to take responsibility and do what I can. So right now we're spending the week doing everything we can to raise liquidity. I can't make any promises about that, but I'm going to try and give it anything I have to if that will make it work. There are a number of players who we are in talks with, LOIs, term sheets, etc. We'll see how that ends up. Every penny of that and of the existing collateral will go straight to users unless or until we've done right by them. After that, investors, old and new, and employees who have fought for what's right for their career and who weren't responsible for any of the ups. Because at the end of the day, I was CEO, which means that I was responsible for making sure that things went well. I ultimately should have been on top of everything. I clearly failed in that. I'm sorry. So what does this mean going forward? I'm not sure. That depends on what happens over the next week. But here are some things I know. 
First, one way or another, Alameda Research is winding down trading. They aren't doing any of the weird things that I see on Twitter and nothing large at all. And one way or another, soon they won't be trading on FTX anymore. Second, in any scenario in which FTX continues operating, its first priority will be radical transparency. Transparency it probably always should have been giving giving as close to on-chain transparency as it can so that people know exactly what is happening on it. All of the stakeholders would have a hard look at FTX governance. I will not be around if I am not wanted. All of the stakeholders, investors, regulators, users would have a large part to play in how it would be run, solely trust. But all of that isn't what matters right now. What matters right now is trying to do right by customers. That's it. A few other comments. This was about FTX International. FTX US, the US-based exchange that accepts Americans, was not financially impacted by this show. It's 100% liquid. Every user could fully withdraw <laughs> updates on the future coming. At some point, I might have to say more about a particular sparring partner, so to speak, but you know, glass houses. So for now, all I'll say is this. Well played, you won. Not advice of any kind in any way. I was not very careful with my words here and do not mean any of them in a technical legal sense. I may well have not described things right, though I'm trying to be transparent. I'm not a good dev and probably misdescribed something. And finally, I sincerely apologize. We'll keep sharing updates when we have them. According to a recent Reuters report, however, another explanation contributing to the precarious house of cards that was a deceptive FTX platform is that earlier this year, Bankman Freed secretly transferred at least $4 billion in customer funds from FTX to Alameda without telling anyone. After Alameda was hit with a series of losses and that FTX entities lent more than half of its 16 billion in customer funds to Alameda in total with more than 10 billion in loans outstanding. FTX offer and sales of YBAs, which are unregistered securities. Beginning in 2019, the FTX entities began offering interest bearing cryptocurrency accounts to public investors. Plaintiff and other similarly situated individuals invested in FTA's YBAs. FTX maintains that it does not offer for sale any product that constitutes a security under federal or state law. Under federal securities laws, as construed by the United States Supreme Court in its decision, SEC v. W.J. Howey Company, and by the SEC, an investment contract is a form of security under United States securities laws when, one, the purchaser makes an investment of money or exchanges another item of value, two, in a common enterprise, three, with the reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. The YBAs were securities as defined by the United States securities laws and as interpreted by the Supreme Court, the federal courts, and the SEC. The FTX entities offered variable interest rewards on crypto assets held in the YBAs on the deceptive FTX platform which rates were determined by the FTX entities in their sole discretion. In order to generate revenue to fund the promised interest, the FTX entities pooled the YBA assets to engage in lending staking activities from which they derived revenue to pay interest on the YBAs. These activities made the YBAs a security under state and federal law. On October 14, 2022, Director of Enforcement of the Texas State Securities Board, Joseph Rotunda, filed a declaration in the Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings pending in connection with the collapse of the Voyeur Digital Cryptocurrency Exchange, in which he explained how the YBAs are, in fact, an offering of unregistered securities in the form of yield-bearing accounts to the residents of the United States. In his declaration, the pertinent portions of which are re reproduced in full for ease of reference, Rotunda explains. I am also familiar with FTX trading LTD, doing business as FTX, as described herein. As more fully explained throughout this declaration, I'm aware that FTX trading, along with West 
Realm Shires Services, Inc., doing business as FTX US, may be offering unregistered securities in the form of yield bearing accounts to residents of the United States. These products appear similar to the yield bearing depository accounts offered by Voyeur Digital LTD. And the Enforcement Division is now investigating FTX Trading, FTX US, and their principles, including Sam Bankman Free. I understand that FTX Trading is incorporated in Antigua and Barbuda and headquartered in the Bahamas. It was organized and founded in part by Mr. Bankman Freed, and FTX Trading appears to be restricting operations in the United States. For example, domestic users accessing the webpage for FTX Trading at FTX.com are presented with a pop up window that contains a disclaimer that reads in part Did you mean to go to FTX US? FTX US is a US licensed cryptocurrency exchange that welcomes American users. You're accessing FTX from the United States. You won't be able to use any of FTX.com's services, though you're welcome to look around the site. FTX US claims to be regulated as a money services business with FinCEN and as a money transmitter, a seller of payment instruments and other non-securities capacities in many different states. It is not, however, registered as a money transmitter or in any other capacity with the Texas Department of Banking, and it is not registered as a securities dealer with the Texas State Securities Board. FTX US owns 75% or more of the outstanding equity of FTX Capital Markets, a firm registered as a broker dealer with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, Inc., and 53 state and territorial securities regulators. FTX Capital's registration as a dealer in Texas became effective on May 7, 2012, and the registration continues to remain in force and effect. FTX US maintains a website. There you have it. Users, a, users appear able to click a link on this web page to download the FTX trading app, even when they reside in the United States. On October 14, 2022, I downloaded and installed the FTX trading app on my smartphone. I created an account with FTX trading through the FTX trading app and linked the FTX account to an existing personal bank account. During the process, I provided my full first and last name and entered my residential address in Austin, Texas. I also accessed hyperlinks in the FTX trading app that redirected to the privacy policy and terms of service. Although I was from the United States and was using the application tied to FTX trading, the privacy policy and terms of service were from FTX US and not FTX trading. I thereafter used the FTX trading app to initiate the transfer of $50 from my bank account to the FTX account and then transferred one either from one ETH from a 3.0 wallet to the FTX account. The transfer of funds from my bank account to the FTX account will take up to six days to complete, but the transfer of ETH was processed within a few minutes. The FTX trading app showed that I was eligible to earn a yield on my deposits. It also explained that the earn program is provided by FTX.us, not FTX trading. It also represented that FTX earned rewards are available for user for US users on a promotional basis. I recall the FTX trading apps default settings were automatically configured to enable the earning of yield. The application also contained a link for additional information about yield. I accessed the link and was redirected to a recent article published by Blockfolio Rebecca under help.blockfolio.com article began as follows. You can now earn yield on your crypto purchases and deposits as well as your fiat balances in your FTX trading app. By opting in and participating in staking your supported assets in your FTX account, you will be eligible to earn up to 8% APY on your staked assets. This APY is estimated and not guaranteed as described below. The article also described the payment of yield. It contains a section titled, How do you calculate APY? Does my balance compound daily? That read in part as follows. FTX will deposit yield earnings from the staked coins calculated hourly on the investment portfolio that is stored in your FTX trading account. Yield will be compounded on principal and yield that you have already earned. 
any cryptocurrency that you have deposited on FTX, as well as any fiat balance you may have on your account will earn yield immediately after you have opted into the program. The first 10,000 USD value in your deposit wallets will earn 8% APY. Amounts held above 10,000 up to 10 million USD in value subject to market fluctuations will earn 5% APY. In this scenario, your yield earned on the coins will look something like the examples below the table. The article also contained a section titled, Is This Available in My Country? This section explained the FTX trading app, Earn is available to FTX trading app customers that are in one of the FTX permitted jurisdictions. It contained a hyperlink to an article titled Location Restrictions published by FTX Crypto Deriv Derivatives Exchange under help.ftx.com. This article described various restrictions on operations in certain countries and locations and read in part as follows. FTX does not onboard or provide services to corporate accounts of entities located in, established in, or a resident of the United States of America. And you've got a whole long list there. FTX also does not onboard corporate accounts located in or a resident of Antigua or Barbuda. FTX also does not onboard any users from Ontario and FTX does not permit non-professional investors from Hong Kong purchasing certain products. FTX does not onboard or provide services to personal accounts of current residents of the United States. And then you got a long list there. There may be partial restrictions in other jurisdictions, potentially including Hong Kong, Thailand, Malaysia, India, and Canada. In addition, FTX does not onboard any users from Ontario, does not permit non-professional investors from Hong Kong purchasing certain products, and does not offer derivatives products to users from Brazil. FTX serves all Japanese residents via FTX Japan. Despite the fact that I identified, I identified myself by name and address, the FTX trading app now shows that I'm earning yield on the ETH. The yield is valued at 8% APR. Based upon my earning of yield and an ongoing investigation by the Enforcement Division of the Texas State Securities Board, the yield program appears to be an investment contract. Evidence of indebtedness and note and as such appears to be a regular appears to be regulated as a security in texas as provided by section 4001.068 of the texas securities act at all times material to the opening of this ftx account ftx trading and ftx us have not been registered to offer or sell securities in texas ftx trading and ftx us may therefore be violating section 4004.051 of the texas securities act Moreover, the yield program described herein has not been registered or permitted for sale in Texas as generally required by Section 4003.001 of the Securities Act, and as such, FTX Trading and FTX US may be in violation of Section 4003.001 by offering unregistered and unpermitted securities for sale in Texas. Finally, FTX Trading and FTX US may not be fully disclosing all known material facts to clients prior to opening accounts and earning yield, thereby possibly engaging in fraud and or making offers containing statements that are materially misleading or otherwise likely to deceive the public. Certain principles of FTX trading and FTX US may also be violating these statutes and disclosure requirements. Further investigation is necessary to conclude whether FTX trading, FTX US and others are violating the Securities Act through the acts and practices described in this declaration. The Enforcement Division of the Texas State Securities Board understands that FTX US placed the highest bid for assets of Voyager Dig Digital LTD, a family of companies variously accused of misconduct in connection with the sale of securities similar to the yield program promoted by FTX Trading and FTX US. FTX US is managed by Sam Bankman Freed, CEO and founder, Gary Wang, CTO and founder, and Nishad Singh, head of engineering. The same principles hold the same positions at FTX Trading, and I was able to access the yield earning product after following a link to the FTX Trading app from FTX US's website. The FTX Trading app also indicated the EARN program is provided by FTSUX. 
As such, FTX US should not be permitted to purchase the assets of the debtor unless or until the securities commissioner has an opportunity to determine whether FTX US is complying with the law and related and or affiliated companies, including companies commonly controlled by the same management, are complying with the law. I hereby authorize Texas Attorney General's office and any of its representatives to use this declaration in this bankruptcy proceeding. I declare a penalty of perjury that the foregoing is true and correct. Executed October 14, 2022 in Austin, Texas. Signed, Joseph Jason Rotunda. The defendants aggressively marketed the FTX platform. In addition to the conduct of defendant Sam Bankman fried as described in this complaint, some of the biggest names in sports and entertainment have either invested in FTX or been brand ambassadors for the company. A number of them hyped FTX to their social media fans, driving retail consumer adoption of the defective FTX platform. In April 2021, FTX became the first company in the crypto industry to name an arena. This helped lend credibility and recognition to the FTX brand and give the massive fan base of basketball exposure to the defective FTX platform. FTX's explanation for using stars like Brady, Giselle, and other defendants was no secret. We're the newcomers to the scene, said then FTX.US President Brett Harrison, referring to the crypto services landscape in the US. The company needs to familiarize consumers with its technology, customer service, and offerings while competing with incumbents like Coinbase, Global Inc., and Kraken. Mr. Harrison said, we know that we had to embark on some kind of mass branding, advertising, sponsorship type work in order to be able to do that, he said. In other words, the FTX entities needed celebrities like defendants to continue funneling investors in the FTX Ponzi scheme and to promote and substantially assist in the sale of the YBAs, which are unregistered securities. Below are representative statements and advertisements defendants made to drive the offers and or sales of the YBAs, which plaintiffs and class members will supplement as the case progresses and discovery unfolds. To have a picture of Tom Brady and Giselle, the star quarterback and the businesswoman and model, then a couple, became FTX ambassadors last year. They also took equity stakes in FTX trading LTD. Mr. Brady and Giselle also joined the company's $20 million ad campaign in 2021. They filled a commercial called FTX UN, showing them telling acquaintances to join the FTX platform. The ad can be viewed here. Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful, both a brand ambassador and an FTX shareholder, made several public statements designed to induce consumers to invest in the YBAs. To find crypto investments opportunities that meet my own rigorous standards of compliance, I entered into this relationship with at FTX official, Mr. Leary said on Twitter last year. Mr. O'Leary recently deleted the tweet. He also served as a judge for the FTX charity hackathon in Miami in March of 2022. And very recently on October 12, 2022, O'Leary stated confidently that FTX was totally compliant and a safe place to hold assets. O'Leary stated that I have to disclose I'm a paid spokesperson, spokesperson for a FTX and shareholder there too, because we mentioned him and I'm a big advocate for Sam because he has two parents who are compliance lawyers. If there's ever a place I could be that I'm not going to get in trouble, it's going to be in FTX. So you know that you know that they're great people, but he gets the job in compliance, which is why he's working so hard to get regulation. Then we have um, Kevin O'Leary's statement here. There are a lot of signs right now that point to things looking bad. Crypto is taking a big hit. And investors are wondering if things will turn around. If you follow history and the pattern of things, you know that this is right on track and we'll soon see a resurgence with crypto. Do you think we're entering a bullish period? Let me know in the comments. He had 8,752 comments. He went on to state that there are a lot of signs right now that point to things looking bad. Crypto has taken a big hit and investors are wondering if things will turn around. If you follow the history and pattern of things, you know that this is right on track and we'll soon see a resurgence with crypto. Do you think we're entering a bullish period? Let me know in the comments. Udonis Haslam, 
the captain of the Miami Heat, Miami legend, became an FTX global ambassador, much like Brady and Giselle. He started in FTX's UN Miami ad campaign that launched at the start of 2021-2022 Miami Heat season. In the ad, which can be viewed here, Haslam states, FTX has arrived in 305. So I just got one question. Are you in Miami? Others respond, if he's in, I'm in. Haslam concludes, our city, our team, FTX, you in Miami. David Ortiz. Defendant David Ortiz, who became an FTX brand ambassador and hyped the YBAs in exchange for cryptocurrency and multiple collections of NFTs, also ran his own FTX UN ad, which began running nationwide during the first game of the 2021 World Series. The ad, which can be found here, Ortiz is watching a game on television when he receives a phone call from the moon. Inspired by the moon blast, a home run scored on the field. The moon frantically tells David about opportunities to get into cryptocurrency with FTX. David decides it's an offer he can't refuse and joins fellow sports stars Steph Curry and Tom Brady on the platform. FTX announces it is the official crypto exchange of MLB. Steph Curry. Defendant Steph Curry had his own nationwide ad campaign pushing the deceptive FTX platform known as hashtag not an expert campaign. Throughout the ad, Curry repeatedly denies being cast as an expert in cryptocurrency, culminating in his statement that I'm not an expert and I don't need to be. With FTX, I have everything I need to buy, sell, and trade crypto safely. The purpose of Curry being an ambassador is to expand the reach of the crypto firm and tout the viability of cryptocurrency to new audiences around the world. FTX said in a press release, in other words, to drive adoption of the deceptive FTX platform and to facilitate the sales of unregistered YBAs to unsuspecting and unwitting retail consumers. I'm excited to partner with a company that demystifies the crypto space and eliminates the intimidation factor for first time users. Curry said in a statement highlighting that first time inexperienced users were the intended targets of the campaign. Let's see if we can scroll to the next page. All right, Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors and the FTX officially launched their partnership in 2022 with the unveiling of the FTX logo on the court at the Chase Center. As the Warriors' official cryptocurrency platform and FTX marketplace, the franchise dropped FTXs on FTX.us beginning in early 2022. The partnership between the Warriors and FTX marked the first international rights partner for the Warriors, meaning that GSW and FTX had a visible market presence, inclusive of logo and likeness internationally. The deal also included the Warriors G League team, the Golden Warriors, and Warriors Gaming Squad, affiliated esports teams, in arena signage at Chase Center and virtual signage at Warriors games. Shaquille O'Neal, we couldn't keep it secret any longer. We're partnering with the one and only at Shaq. Defendant Shaquille O'Neal, professional, former professional NBA basketball star, sports analyst, and entrepreneur, also became an FTX ambassador, stating in a video posted on FTX's Twitter account that I'm excited to be partnering with FTX FTX to help make crypto accessible to everyone. I'm all in. Are you? Trevor Lawrence. We're excited to announce our partnership with football star Trevor Lawrence. The world of sports and crypto will never be the same. Okay, this is defendant William Trevor Lawrence, the first pick in the 2021 NFL draft and now quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL, became a brand ambassador for FTX in exchange for an unspecified cryptocurrency payments, which sponsorship was announced in April 2021. The stated purpose of the sponsorship was because Trevor is someone people can have a personal and human connection with for FTX and the crypto space. All right, Mr. Otani. The FTX entities entered into a long-term partnership with global icon and history-making MLB superstar Otani, in addition to being an FTX global ambassador. Mr. Otani received all of his compensation in equity and cryptocurrencies. 
In exchange for those unspecified payments, Mr. Otani served as a spokesperson for FTX to increase awareness of the deceptive FTX platform and to drive adoption of and investments in the unregistered YBA securities on a global scale through a variety of initiatives. Then we have Nosami Osaka. Defendant Nosami Osaka, Naomi Osaka, a 24-year-old professional tennis player and four-time Grand Slam singles champion, became a brand ambassador for FTX with the express purpose of getting more women to start investing in crypto. Osaka wore the FTX logo on the kit she wore at tournaments, including the 2022 Miami Open, in exchange for an equity stake in FTX and payments in unspecified amounts of cryptocurrency. Osaka directed and produced content in association with the FTX entities designed to promote the offer and sale of the unregistered YBA securities, hoping she will reach a global audience. Osaka confirmed her involvement by tweeting a glitzy new FTX ad to her 1.1 million followers, which can be viewed here. It shows the tennis star competing in a comic strip and over dramatic music. She says, I thought they made the rules for us. They thought they could control. They thought they made the rules for us. They thought they could control us. They were wrong. The video then cuts to a boardroom full of marketing executives talking about the ad in a tongue-in-cheek way and discussing other ideas, including Osaka heading to the moon. An idea to have a QR code bouncing around the screen, a clear nod to Coinbase's Super Bowl spot, is dismissed for being boring. They settle on letting Osaka speak for herself and play a mock-up of the tennis ace giving an interview to a news channel where she says, I'm Naomi Osaka and I'm proud to partner with FTX. Making cryptocurrency accessible is a goal that FTX and I are striving towards. The ad ends with the tagline, Naomi is in. You in? Larry David. For his part, the legendary comedian and creator of Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David created an ad for the FTX entities called Don't Miss, Don't Miss Out on Crypto, which aired during the 2022 Super Bowl, making FTX one of the most retweeted brands during the Super Bowl and winning the most comical honorific from USA Today's ad meter. The ad, the only Super Bowl commercial David ever appeared in, featuring David being a skeptic on such historically important inventions as the wheel, the fork, the toilet, democracy, the light bulb, the dishwasher, the Sony Walkman, and of course, FTX, and cautioned viewers, don't be like Larry. The ad can be viewed here. Class action allegations. As detailed below in the individual counts, plaintiffs bring this lawsuit on behalf of themselves and all others similarly situated pursuant to Rule 23A, B2, B3, and or C4 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Class definitions. Plaintiffs seek to represent the following nationwide classes and state subclasses, collectively the classes. If the court agrees with the underside counsel that the claims asserted here will apply to all class members, the court may only have to certify the nationwide issue class. One, nationwide issue class. All persons or entities in the United States who, within the applicable limitations period, purchased or enrolled in AYBA. Florida subclass. All persons or entities in the state of Florida who, within the applicable limitations period, purchased or enrolled in an YBA. Excluded from the classes are defendants and their officers, directors, affiliates, legal representatives, and employees, the FTX entities and their officers, directors, affiliates, legal representatives, and employees, any governmental entities, any judge, justice, or judicial officer presiding over this matter, and the members of their immediate families and judicial staff. Plaintiffs to reserve the right to modify or amend the definition of the proposed nationwide class and Florida subclass, or to include additional classes or subclasses before or after the court determines whether search certification is appropriate as discovery progresses. Plaintiffs seek certification of the nationwide class in part because all offers of FTX YBAs to plaintiffs and the class members in which defendants each substantially participated were made by FTX from their principal place of business in Miami, Florida, and thus every single offer to sell an FTX YBA stems from a transactional occurrence that emanated from the state of Florida. Plaintiff seeks certification of the Florida subclass in the alternative. Numerosity. The classes are comprised of thousands, if not millions, of consumers nationwide to whom FTX offered and or sold YBAs. 
Moreover, thousands, if not millions of consumers nationwide and throughout these states have executed trades on the FTX platform within the applicable limitations period. Memberships in the classes is thus so numerous that joinder of all members is impractical, practicable. The precise number of class members is currently unknown to plaintiffs, but is easily identifiable through FTX's corporate records. Commonality predominance. This action involves common questions of law and fact, which predominate over any questions affecting individual class members. These common law and factual questions include, but are not limited to the following. A, whether the YBAs were unregistered securities under federal or Florida law. B, whether defendants' participation and or actions in FTX's offerings and sales of YBAs violate the provisions of the Securities Act and Florida securities law. C, the type and measure of damages offered by plaintiffs and the classes. A, whether defendants' practices violate FDUTPA, whether plaintiffs and class members have sustained monetary loss and the proper measure of that loss. C, whether plaintiffs and class members are entitled to injunctive relief. D, whether plaintiffs and class members are entitled to declaratory relief. E, whether plaintiffs and class members are entitled to consequential damages, punitive damages, statutory damages, disgorgement, and other and or other legal or equitable appropriate remedies as a result of defendant's conduct. Typicality. Plaintiff's claims are typical of the claims of the members of the classes because all members were injured through this through the uniform misconduct described above, namely that plaintiffs and all class members were offered and or sold FTX's YBAs as a result of defendants' actions and or participation in the offering and sale of those unregistered securities, and plaintiffs are advocating the same claims and legal theories on behalf of themselves and all such members. Further, there are no defenses available to either defendant that are unique to plaintiffs. Adv adequacy of representation. Plaintiffs will fairly and adequately protect the interests of the members of the classes. Plaintiffs have retained counsel, experienced in complex consumer class action litigation, and plaintiffs intend to prosecute this action vigorously. Plaintiffs have no adverse or antagonistic interests to those of the classes. Plaintiffs anticipate no difficulty in the management of this litigation as a class action. To prosecute this case, plaintiffs have chosen the undersigned law firms with having the financial and legal resources to meet the substantial costs and legal issues associated with this type of consumer class litigation. Requirements of Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 23B3. The questions of law are common fact to plaintiffs in each classes, members, claims, predominate over any questions of law or fact affecting only individual members of the classes. All claims by defendants and the unnamed members of the classes are based on the common course of conduct of defendants, one, in marketing, offering, and or selling the YBAs, which are unregistered securities, and or two, in receiving secret undisclosed compensation for their promotion of the deceptive FTX platform. Common issues predominate when, as here, liability can be determined on a class-wide basis, even when there will be some individualized damages determinations. As a result, when determining whether common questions predominate, courts focus on the liability issue, and if the liability issue is common to the classes, as in the case at bar, common questions will be held to predominate over individual questions. Superior. A class action is superior to individual actions for the proposed classes, in part because of the non-exhaustive factors listed below. A, joinder of all class members would create extreme hardship and inconvenience for the affected customers as they reside nationwide and throughout the state. Individual claims by class members are impracticable because the costs to pursue individual claims exceed the value of what any one class member has at stake. As a result, individual class members have no interest in prosecuting and controlling separate actions. There are no known individual class members who are interested in individually controlling the prosecution of separate actions. D, the interests of justice will be well served by resolving the common disputes of potential class members in one forum. E, individual suits would not be cost effective or economically maintainable as individual actions, and F, the action is manageable as a class action. H, requirements for federal civil procedure 23B2. Defendants have acted and refused to act on grounds generally applicable to the classes by engaging in a common course of conduct by 
of aiding and abetting the offering and or selling the YBAs, which are unregistered securities, thereby making appropriate final injunctive relief or declaratory relief with respect to the classes as a whole. Defendants have acted and refused to act on grounds generally applicable to the classes by engaging in a common course of conduct of uniformly identical and uniform misrepresentations and omissions in receiving secret undisclosed compensation for the promotion of the deceptive FTX platform, thereby making appropriate final injunctive relief or declaratory relief with respect to the classes as a whole. I Requirements of Federal Rules of Procedure 23C4. As it is clear that one of the predominant issues regarding defendant's liability is whether the YBAs FTX offered and or sold are unregistered securities utilizing 23C4 to certify the classes for a class-wide adjudication on this issue would materially advance the disposition of the litigation as a whole. It is clear that another predominant issue regarding defendant's liability is whether they have violated the Consumer Protection and Securities Laws of Florida in making identical and uniform misrepresentations and omissions regarding the functionality of the deceptive FTX platform and or in receiving, oh no, I think this is where I was. All right, let's scroll back down here. Defendants have, let's see, defendants have acted and do, 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 do. All right, let's scroll back down to 93. If I said the numbers, I'd probably know where I was. All right, it is clear. Okay, so we got through most of that. Nature of notice to the proposed classes. The names and addresses of all class members are contained in the business records maintained by FTX and are readily available to FTX. The class members are readily and objectively identifiable. Plaintiffs contemplate that notice will be provided to class members by email, mail, and published notice. All right, count one. Violations of Florida statute section 517.07 of the Florida Securities and Investment Protection Act. Plaintiffs individually and on behalf of the nationwide class, alternatively on behalf of the Florida subclass. Plaintiffs repeat and reallege the allegations contained in paragraphs 1 through 94 above as if fully set forth herein. Section 517.071 Florida statute provides that it is unlawful and a violation for any person to sell or offer to sell a security within the state of Florida unless the security is exempt under Florida statute 517.051 is sold in a transaction exempt under Florida statute 517.061 is a federally covered security or is registered pursuant to chapter 517 Florida statute. Section 517.211 extends liability to any director, officer, partner, or agent of or for the seller if the director, officer, partner, or agent has personally participated or aided in making the sale is jointly and severally liable to the purchaser in an action for rescission if the purchaser still owns the security or for damages if the purchaser has sold the security. The YBA is a security pursuant to Florida Statute 517.02122A. The YBAs sold and offered for, plaint for sale to plaintiffs and class members were not A, exempt from registration under Florida Statute 517.051, B, a, federally, a federal covered security, C, registered with the Office of Financial Regulations, or D, sold in a transaction exempt under Florida Statute Section 517.061. The FTX entities sold and offered to sell the unregistered YBAs to plaintiffs and the members of the class. Defendants are directors, officers, partners, and or agents of the FTX entities pursuant to Florida Statute Section 517.211. The FTX entities with defendants material assistance offered and sold the unregistered YBAs to plaintiffs and the members of the class. As a result of this assistance, defendants violated Florida Statute Section 517.07 and plaintiff and members of the class sustained damages herein described. Count two for violations of the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act. Section 501.201 Florida Statutes plaintiffs individually and on behalf of the nationwide class, alternatively on behalf of the Florida subclass. Plaintiffs repeat and reallege the allegations contained in paragraphs 1 through 94 above as if fully set forth herein. This 
cause of action is brought pursuant to the Florida Deceptive and Trade Practices Act, Section 501.201 Florida Statute, FDUTPA. The stated purpose of the FDUTPA is to protect the consuming public from those who engage in unfair methods of competition or unconscionable, deceptive, or unfair acts or practices in the conduct of any trade or commerce, section 501.2022 Florida statute. Plaintiffs and class members are consumers as defined by section 501.203 Florida statute. Defendants are engaged in a trade or commerce within the meaning of FDUTPA. Florida statute section 501.2041 declares unfair, unlawful, unfair methods of competition, unconscionable acts or practices, and unfair or deceptive acts or practices in the conduct of any trade or commerce. Defendants' unfair and deceptive practices, as described herein, are objectively likely to mislead or have misled consumers acting reasonably in the circumstances. Defendants have violated FDUTPA by engaging in the unfair and deceptive practices described herein, which offend public policies and or immoral, unethical, unscrupulous, and injurious to consumers. Plaintiffs and consumers in the class action. There goes my battery. Plaintiffs and consumers in the class have been aggrieved by defendants' unfair and deceptive practices and acts of false advertising by paying into the Ponzi scheme that was the deceptive FTX platform and in the amount of their lost investments. The harm suffered by plaintiffs and consumers in the class was directly and proximately caused by the deceptive and unfair practices of defendants, as more fully described herein. Pursuant to sections 501, 0.2112 and 501.2105 Florida statute, plaintiffs and consumers in the class make claims for actual damages, attorney's fees, and costs. Defendants still utilize many of the deceptive acts and practices described above. Plaintiffs and other members of the class have suffered and will continue to suffer irreparable harm if defendants continue to engage in such deceptive, unfair, and unreasonable practices. Section 501.2111 entitles plaintiffs and the class to obtain both declaratory and injunctive relief to put an end to defendants' unfair and deceptive scheme. Count three, civil conspiracy. Plaintiffs individually and on behalf of nationwide class, alternatively and uh, on behalf of the Florida class, plaintiffs repeat and reallege the allegations contained in paragraphs one through 94 above as if fully set forth herein. The FTX entities and defendants made numerous misrepresentations and omissions to plaintiff and class members about the deceptive FTX platform in order to induce confidence and to drive consumers to invest in what was ultimately a Ponzi scheme, misleading customers and prospective customers with the false impression that any cryptocurrency assets held on the deceptive FTX platform were safe and were not being invested in unregistered securities. The FTX entities entered into one or more agreements with defendants with the purpose of making these misrepresentations and or omissions to induce plaintiffs and customers, consumers to invest in the YBAs and or use the deceptive FTX platform. Defendants engaged in unlawful acts with the FTX entities, namely the misrepresentations and omissions made to plaintiffs and the class in the sale of unregistered securities. Defendants' conspiracy substantially assisted or encouraged the wrongdoing conduct by the FTX entities. Further, defendants had knowledge of such fraud and or wrongdoing because their expertise and relationship with the FTX entities as described above and as such knew that the representations made to plaintiffs were deceitful and fraudulent. Defendants' conspiracy with the FTX entities to commit fraud caused damages to plaintiffs in the amount of their lost investments. Count four, declaratory judgment. Declaratory Judgment Act, Florida Statutes, sections 86.011, plaintiffs individually on behalf of the nationwide class, alternatively on behalf of the Florida subclass. Plaintiffs reallege and... Plaintiffs reallege 
Plaintiff realleges and, and incorporates by reference all the allegations contained in paragraphs 1 through 94 as if fully set forth herein. This count is asserted against defendants in Florida statute section 86.011. There is a bona fide, actual, present, and practical need for the declaratory relief requested herein. The declaratory relief prayed for herein deal with the present ascertained or ascertainable state of facts and present controversy as to a state of facts, contractual and statutory duties and rights that are dependent upon the facts and the law applicable to the facts. The parties have an actual, present, adverse, and antagonistic interest in the subject matter, and the antagonistic and adverse interests are all before the court by proper process for final resolution. Plaintiffs and the members of the class have an obvious and significant interest in this lawsuit. Plaintiffs and members of the class purchased YBAs based in part on justifiable reliance on the defendant's misrepresentations and omissions regarding the deceptive FTX platform as further described herein above. If the true facts had been known, including but not limited to that the YBAs are unregistered securities, the deceptive FTX platform does not work as representative as represented and defendants were paid exorbitant sums of money to peddle Voyager to the nation, plaintiffs and the class would not have purchased YBAs in the first place. Thus, there is a judiciable, a, a justiciable controversy over whether the YBAs were sold illegally and whether the defendants illegally solicited their purchases from plaintiffs and the class. Plaintiffs and the class seek an order declaring that the YBAs were securities required to be registered with the SEC and state regulatory authorities, that the deceptive FTX platform did not work as presented and defendants were paid exorbitant sums of money to peddle FTX to the nation. All right, then we have a prayer for relief here. Wherefore, plaintiffs pray for a judgment on behalf of themselves and the classes, certifying the classes as requested herein, awarding actual direct and compensatory damages, awarding restitution and disgorgement of revenues if warranted, awarding declaratory relief as permitted by law or equity, including declaring the defendant's practices as set forth herein to be unlawful, and this is my battery sort of slowly dying here, awarding injunctive relief as permitted by law or equity, including enjoining the defendants from continuing to purchase, to continuing those unlawful practices as set forth herein, and directing the defendants to identify with court supervision victims of their conduct and pay them all money they are required to pay, awarding statutory and multiple damages as appropriate, awarding attorney's fees and costs, and providing such further relief as may be just and proper. Demand for jury trial. Plaintiffs hereby demand a jury trial as to all claims so triable. Then you have dated November 15, 2022, signed by the attorneys. And that is it. That wraps up that complete complaint. And then maybe there are only five more like that unless they get consolidated. So we'll see. Go ahead and give a thumbs up if you were able to get all that information together. And don't forget to subscribe.